The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm going to talk about the many different ways you can play Atari games. There is a crazy amount of options on the market today. I'm going to focus on what's still available. And you know what? I thought I'd discuss this topic as, you know, this is something that I have a lot of experience with. And I have many of the options available. And so you may not realize how many different options there actually are on the market to play Atari games. And there's pros and cons to everyone. I'm not here to say which one's better. In the comments below, let me know how you play Atari games. And I'm gonna go over a multitude of different options out there. First and foremost, you may be old school and you may have this still in your collection. You may have grown up with Atari. Atari is not just limited to 2600. Uh, you know what, there's other options. And the downside of original hardware is availability. It's not really accessible to many people. You have to buy on eBay. You may have gotten rid of your original hardware long ago. Uh, original hardware can be expensive. It requires updates sometimes, uh, replacing hardware inside these components, as well as, you know, just, <clears throat> just difficult to acquire. And so, you know, for some people, for some people, this may not be an option, but the advantage of original hardware is 100% compatibility with everything out there that was made software-wise for a particular console or computer, Atari ST, uh, Lynx, Jaguar, 5200, Atari 8-bit computer. You know, these are some classic consoles and computers that aren't always offered on compilations. And so, um, you know what, if maybe you're old school, this is a great option if you're playing with original television set or a CRT or original monitor. Um, but like I mentioned before, it's, it's difficult to, to track some of this down and acquire it now. And so, but uh, the compromise too, another thing that I definitely need to bring up is multi-carts. And multi-carts are a great way to appreciate the software on original hardware or some aftermarket consoles. Uh, you know, the game drive, you know, this is a great option from Stone Age Gamer. Uh, they, off, they also offer uh, the Jaguar game drive or did. Uh, I know sometimes this goes out of stock and, and demand of it's pretty high. There's also the Harmony cart. And these are just a few of the multi-carts that are out there for just a few systems. There's other ones for Lynx, as well as many others that, I, uh, that I've covered on my channel. Uh, Uno cart comes to mind, and there's some others as well. But anyways, multi-carts is a great way to play, typically on original hardware, but there's some other options as well. But pretty nice. Dragonfly cart comes to mind. Uh, that is a, a more recent one that was made in limited production. All right, the next one has been in the news quite a bit, and that's the Atari 2600 Plus. Now, Atari made this. This is something I covered on my channel. I even covered an update. They are currently updating the uh, game compatibility for this. Now, this is a great option for people that want to go the route of Atari 2600 or Atari 7800 games. Now, the downside is it only plays cartridges, okay? And so it's limited to the physical carts that you have. It does work with the Dragonfly cart one at a time. So there's a few multi-carts that work with it, but you can only load one ROM at a time currently, um, but they're currently updating it. Uh, the recent update allows it to play many, many more homebrews for the Atari 7800. And they're currently working on some of the other compatibility issues. And so it's still new, it's still in its infancy. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what the 2600 offers in the future. Uh, we'll be able to play additional cartridges from other consoles with an adapter. Only time will tell, but right now it's a great option if you're wanting to play your old 2600 or 7800 carts on a modern television set. Now there was another uh, console that came out a little bit before the Atari 2600 Plus, and that was the Game Station Pro. And I know there's a lot of fans of this. Uh, it was available at Costco. I do believe it was even on sale uh, for a bit for like 50 bucks. You can still find it around that price online, I do believe. And this is from My Arcade. And the Game Station Pro offers a multitude of different types of Atari games. You know, so it offers some 5200 games, some 7800 games, some 
arcade versions of Atari games, which is important. There's a lot of fans out there that like to play different Atari games. There is a way of adding additional games to it, and that's currently being worked on. And there's a, a, a discussion on the Atari Age forums about that. And they're constantly updating ways of adding additional ROMs to that. And it's a pretty interesting device. Uh, you know, the, the, the plus is it offers a lot more than just 2600 and, you know, even 7800 games. And it's constantly evolving. The downside is I'm not the biggest fan of the controller that comes bundled with it. But I think it, ha it has, it offers some great stuff. And you know what, there's some adapters you can get to, to use it, use modern controllers with it. And I did a full review and you can check that out on my Atari playlist. Now my arcade also offers some other devices. It's the Pocket Player Pro is one and they also have a micro player. They, al they also offer a micro player pro and these are other ways of playing 2600 games. And these are budget releases, you know, 40 bucks. This is a, these are some great novelty items as you know if, if you know somebody that grew up with atari and just wants to play some of the atari classics this is a way now i don't think there's a way of adding games to this uh at least uh i haven't seen one i'm sure there's someone out there that found a way but anyways uh, a nice option 40 dollars price point you can go to my arcade and check out their other items that they offer for sale as well now there's some other no novelty items there's a tiny arcade and that's like the smallest way of playing 2600 games. And that's pretty novelty. Um, it's not my personal preference of playing, but you may like this collectible item. It's about 30 bucks, I do believe, on Amazon. So that's another option for people out there that want to play, get their Atari fix with something kind of unique. And so there's many other novelty items out there. Um, this is just one example, but so I kind of classify them all together. Next up is the Retron 77. Now, lots of people have opinions about this. And, you know, Hyperkin came out with this a few years back, and it was the first, like, uh, clone console of the Atari 2600, at least uh, officially recently in the States, to play games on modern television sets. And you know what? It, it, it just fell a little bit short. Now, with some community builds and updates, I did a video Showing that um, it did make the console a lot better. Now, what's cool about the uh, Retron 77 is it plays cartridges, but it also has a micro SD card slot. So all the cartridges games that don't aren't compatible with this, you can play many of the ROMs on the actual hardware. And so it is kind of the best of both worlds in some aspects. The cartridge compatibility is not as good as a 2600 plus, especially with the update. And so, there are several games that aren't working cartridge-wise on this, but there's fans of it. It is a little bit cheaper than the 2600 plus, and so you may wanna consider that option. You can still find them. They are getting a little bit more scarce, but if you go on Amazon, you can still find these readily available. Uh, I have had the Atari VCS for three years, and this is kind of where things get a little confusing. It's like, okay, so they came out with a 2600 plus, and there's the Game Station Pro. Well, three years ago, they offered the Atari VCS. I've covered this a lot on my channel. Um, you know what? And this is kind of a micro PC. And there's two kind of options with playing games. You can go on Atari Store, which is uh, up, which is updated. You can update this out of the box. That was an issue for a long time. There's about 140 plus games now available on the market as the uh, filming of this video. But, you know, you can also flip it over to the PC side. Uh, you know what? You can run Linux on it. There's lots of different options of playing emulators through your Atari VCS. Now, the con is the price. Uh, that price point is still fairly high. It typically goes on sale. And from time to time, that sale goes way down where you can get this and a bundle of controllers for like under $200. And so that's, that's the strength of this. Uh, the question mark is how long, how much longer is this going to be on the market? How many more games does Atari plan on releasing on it? And so that's the question. You know, Atari's focusing on some other things. You know, with the 2600 Plus launching, um, are they able to support both consoles and at the same time and have for how long? Who knows? Anyways, I've been happy with mine. I'm also a small publisher. All right, next up is Evercade. Now, Evercade 
is uh, multiple platforms. There's the Versus, which is my favorite, and you have uh, some other options here. You have the Super Pocket. These just came out, and you have the awesome EXP. Now, Evercade offered five cartridges, five cartridges that would, now if you're not familiar with Evercade, it is uh, some platforms that offer these multi-carts and they, they play on the go or with the, with the Versus, it's, it's a $100 console and it plays these multi-carts. And so they made five, five Atari themed multi-carts. Now, they're no longer, I think, working with Atari. And so I don't think there are uh, any other Atari carts coming out for the time being. And so you have two Atari collections of 2,600 games and some 7,800 on here. So that's cool. As well as the Lynx collection, the two Lynx collections. So that was awesome. Nice to see that as well as the Atari Arcade. And so these were five multi-carts offered for Atari games, and so that's kind of a nifty way of playing Atari games, though I don't think they're making any more. This next one, people are gonna have lots of opinions on as well, and that's the Atari Flashback consoles. Now, Atari Flashback 2 was popular because you could uh, modify it and put a cartridge slot in it and actually play uh, Atari cartridges. It wasn't 100% compatible, but there's many people out there that like that one. Well, they've done several versions. Now, this is the 50th anniversary. It's currently called the Atari Flashback 12. I do believe you can still purchase this and essentially it's the same version as the Atari 50th, I do believe, other than just a, a skin job on the front. But anyways, same games. Uh, it has a multitude of Atari games on there. Um, you know what? And so there's a lot of opinions of the Flashback games. They can be modified to add a lot of additional games. The focus is the 2600 games, and for many people, they want more than that. But you can modify them, and there's uh, a forum on Atari Age that talks about that. But you know what? That's an option for some people. Again, it's cheaper than uh, some of the, the, the other options that I've mentioned, and so it might be a budget option for some people. There's several arcade machines out there, and you may have your favorite, and you can always go with like a MAME setup and play your Atari games that way. Well, there's two companies that come to mind. Uh, one of them is 1UP Arcade, and they did a multitude of different Atari-themed arcade machines, and now Atari.com is now offering those. Uh, the pro of that is you're getting something that has really nice uh, panel design. These modern arcade setups are lighter than original arcade machines, and some of them take up less space, so there's that. I've had uh, a couple one-up arcades in my collection. I have a few in the back there. Um, you know what, I've been happy with them. Some people may not consider them true arcade machines, and that's fine if you have that opinion. But you know what, uh, they are still fairly expensive in that five to $600 range, um, and there's a limited amount of games. And so uh, there are ways of modifying your arcade one-up to play additional games. And there's forums on Facebook as well as others that talk about that. But you know what? That's not my wheelhouse. Anyways, uh, this is an option for people out there that want to have like an arcade machine. Now, there's also the Arcade Legends by At Games. That's something I've never owned. I've heard about it. And their, what, $5.99 setup does have Atari games built in. They also offer many other devices in which you can modify and add additional arcade games. They have a joystick controller, which I covered a few years back. I got one on clearance through GameStop. Um, they have several other uh, devices, but you can, uh, with some of these, you can add a firmware update and you can add additional games if you wish. I don't have a lot of experience with that. So, you know, at your own risk with anything, adding your own ROMs. Next, the big one, and this is probably a primary way of many people, is emulation in general. And so, you know, emulation, uh, you know, I'm just showing here a, a Raspberry Pi setup. The nice thing about emulation is that you can play many, many different types of games that will never get ported or updated or platforms. You know, uh, Atari ST comes to mind, Atari 8-bit computer, Atari 5200. You know, a lot of collections only have a limited amount of these. And so what's nice about emulation is you can play everything. Now, uh, Raspberry Pi, 
uh, you might be able to get one of those cheaper, but they have gone up in price. And um, I don't know if the price has stabilized recently, but they're a lot more expensive than what they used to be. But the nice thing about uh, Raspberry Pi setup is you can make it any, any, you can play the games any way you want. You want to build an arcade machine around one. You want to have a joystick setup, trackball, you name it. What's cool about the Raspberry Pi is it's powerful enough to play the games that you, how you want to play them. And people have gotten really creative with their setups. And so I just have a simple setup uh, just to capture some footage of some kind of more obscure arcade and computer games and that's why i have one in my collection next up is like a fpga field programmable gate array and uh something that comes to mind is the analog pocket the analog pocket is very powerful and it's a great way of replaying arcade and atari games as well as a whole bunch more i'm just showing it here playing an atari 7800 game bonk but you know what's great about the arcade pocket is it's a powerful FPGA as well as you can play it on the go and if you have a dock which I do I haven't unboxed it yet but uh, you can play these on a on a monitor on a screen and you know what there's other ways too of playing Atari 2600 games through FPGAs there's a mister um, I don't have one of those but I've heard excellent things about it as well as there's other FPGAs in which you can add an Atari 2600 core to um, I messed a little bit around with the Collector Vision Phoenix and you can play Atari games that way as well as many other analog devices. I do believe some of them uh, you can add a 2600 core to if you jailbreak them and play Atari games that way. Last and definitely not least are console collections and there's many and there's a multitude. Uh, well, the most recent one was the Atari 50th, Atari 50 Anniversary Collection, and this is an amazing way of playing uh, Atari games. What's cool about this is it's, it's it's more than just a ROM collection; it's a history. You find out a lot about Atari's history, and it goes in depth. Has interviews with programmers and people that worked at Atari. Um, is it perfect? No. Does it include every game? No. Does it include Jaguar? Yes. Does it include Lynx? Yes. Not any atari st though and that was kind of the, been the big complaint as it needs more atari st games hopefully at some point they'll add some here i know there's a lot of a lot of fans of that especially overseas in europe that want that um you know what and that's part of atari's history and so uh limited appeal to to atari 8-bit as well 5200 there's some games on here but you know what, it's it's still better than kind of the average ROM dump in which it's mostly just ar arcade and 2600 games. And so that's the multitude of what's on the market. There's many other products out there. Um, these are the majority of them. In the comments below, let me know what else is still on the market. And, and thank you so much. If I missed one, sorry about that. I want to thank everybody for coming to this channel. I had fun with this one as I feel like I am an Atari expert and I can talk confidently about these options and there's multitude of different ways of playing atari what is yours in the comments below let me know and as always thank you for coming to my channel if you like what you see consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as i'm uploading videos every week you folks are wonderful and beautiful let's keep it positive this is the immortal john hancock and you take care